Welcome back, this is Professor Xiao Ma. In this video, I will demonstrate and explain a specific hands-on problem. Now keep in mind that in demonstrating the hands-on problem, I will use an example data set, which is default one. When you do the homework, the data set is different. So make sure that you adapt the code to work with the homework. In the video, I assume that whatever Python package that we will be using, you have already installed them. If you realize that you haven't installed a specific package and you need to install it in the middle of the video, simply pause the video and go ahead and install it. Install the Python package by following the tutorials that I uploaded. Now let's get started. For this demo, I'm still using the default one dataset as it's used in uh, many of the other homework videos. To perform train test split, and conduct hypothesis testing, you will need the following packages. Before I split the data into train and test, I will first separate the x and y variables. So here it is. I extract all the x columns and assign it to x, and y is straightforward, it's a target variable. In separating the x and y, make sure that you exclude id column, which is typically not included as one of the input variable. It's simply for using merging and identifying the cases. And also, don't forget to exclude the target variable from the x dataset. Now let's run this. Then I'm ready to conduct the split. In splitting the train and test sets, I'm providing two datasets, x and y, to the, the train test split function. And the function will first split x into the train and test and split y into train and test. So I will get four output here. And make sure that the ordering of the names of the data set is correct because X is provided first. I will get first two X data set and Y is provided second. I will get two Y data set. I'm specifying the test size to be 0 0.4, which means 40% of the cases will be allocated to the test set. Now make sure that you use the random state variable defined up front and specify the, the shuffle argument to be true. Now let's run this. It's always a good idea to conduct sanity check. And here I'm simply going to print the dimensions of these four sets. There are 600 cases in the train set, both X train and Y train. There are 400 cases in the test sets, both X test and Y test. Now I'm ready to conduct the hypothesis testing. The hypothesis testing is used to make sure that the train and test sets are structurally similar, the X variables and the Y variables. I will demonstrate how to conduct Z test for equal proportions of categorical variable labels. And I will use the target variable for demonstration. The target variable is a binary variable, which is special categorical variable. It has only two discrete labels. Currently, the target variable target is coded as a flag variable. It has two values, zero and one. And a value of one means that the, the customer defaulted the account. Now let's talk about these codes. I'm using the value counts method of the series to get the count of cases for each of the labels of the target variable. And because I want a count of y equal one cases for the target variable, I'm selecting the label of one to get the count. And I do the same thing for the test. Now I have two statistics ready to conduct the test. I also need two other statistics but I did not prepare it beforehand because those can be conveniently obtained. Those are the number of cases in the train and test sets. And I can conveniently get the count of cases by using the shape attribute and get the first index. I use the proportion Z test to conduct Z test for equal proportions. I provide two arguments. The first argument is a list of two statistics they are the count of positive cases I prepared. And the second argument is a list of two counts for the number of cases in both sets. Now make sure that the train and test order is the same across the two. I'm using train, I'm putting train in the first and test set in the second. 
And as output, I get two results. The first is the Z statistic. The second is a P value. And I'm printing the two values here. Let's run this. So as a result, the P value is used to conduct hypothesis testing. The P value of 0.42 is greater than the alpha level of 0 0.05, which means the test did not or fail to reject the null hypothesis then I would make the conclusion the target variable has structural similarity in terms of the proportions of cases across the train and test sets. Because I only need the p-value to conduct the hypothesis testing I only save the p value as the output and discard the other two output. Now let's run this. So here I printed out the columns for which I conducted the t-test for equal means. And these are the p value of the hypothesis testing, each of the column between the train and test set. Now, as you can see here, most of these values are greater than 0.05, which is the alpha level. The only exception is this result, which is for column statement underscore three. So of all of the tests, t test for equal means rejected the null hypothesis only for this column statement underscore three. So overall, the majority of the columns have the equal means across the train and test sets. So I conclude that overall, the train test split is successful it created two structurally very similar data sets. So that's it for the demonstration. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.